Hello, everybody. Good evening. Sorry, just want to, what a turnout here. Wow, if I could just have everybody's attention just for a second. We just want to, yeah, just, okay. Wow, really, this is, this is quite the turnout and well-deserved um, for Alvin and, and, and friends. So good evening, everybody. My name is Adam Levy. I'm the executive director for the Rye Art Center. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for Alvin and Friends, sponsored by Morgan Stanley. We are so honored to host such a powerful exhibition as we celebrate Black History Month with truly wonderful works by Alvin, Clayton, and other emerging artists. Since 1960, the Rye Art Center has prided itself on fulfilling its mission to inspire interest and maximize participation in the arts. As the largest community multi-art center in the region, we join others in celebrating the spectrum of the arts and beyond as we celebrate the artistic expressions of the many diverse voices we are proud to stand with. So it's with sincere thanks that we give to Morgan Stanley for their support of this exhibit and our continued mission. And I'd also like to thank Jay Oliver and Christina Maggard for their contributions to this landmark exhibit. So now I'd like to hand it over, thank you, to the curator of the Alvin and Friends exhibit, Kiki Storm, who has truly pulled together a fantastic exhibition for all of us to celebrate. So, Kiki, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Adam. Well, I'm so excited. Wow, this is an incredible crowd. We're, we're overwhelmed and we're super excited that you're all here to join us tonight and view this fantastic art. So welcome again. Um, this is a groundbreaking show, and I say that because it's the first time that the Rye Art Center has dedicated the month of February to black in celebration of Black History Month with a fantastic exhibit. So we're thrilled. <laughs> and I also want to say again, thank you to Morgan Stanley for sponsoring us. We have a nice plaque for Morgan Stanley. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> And also to uh, Jay Oliver and, and Ollie and Christine Maggard for us being our supporting sponsors. So thank you to them. Um, you're here. You're here. Um, and before, before I introduce our featured artist, I want to give you a little bit of a background of the show. The show was prompted by my first visit to the Alvin and Friends restaurant where I viewed the fantastic work of Alvin. And I said, Alvin, we have to do a show. The show was born. Alvin and Friends. The show was born, and Alvin Clayton is our featured artist. And uh, we have 14 additional emerging artists, and they are the friends of the exhibit. And we're so excited to feature them as well. So we are grateful for the opportunity to share all of their work with you. And now I have the pleasure to introduce Alvin Clayton. this thing on? <laughs> I'm here all new equipped. Um, no, first of all, thank you so much to the Rye Art Center for having me be one of the featured artists and also with the emerging artists. I congratulate you all. The work is amazing from all the young artists that are in the show. I'm really honored to be a part of this um, celebration for Black History Month. Um, two years ago, Kiki approached me about doing this show and I can't believe how quickly two years passed. But it was like, and the last couple months, she was in my phone every single day. <laughs> <laughs> but I need that, so, so it, was, it was a good thing. <coughs> um, I'd like to thank Morgan Stanley for coming on as one of the sponsors of this show. Um, really honored to be a part of, of this celebration of Black History Month and to have my work featured. Um, you know, this is like... I, I get emotional about this because for me, I live black history every single day. It's, it's, it's who I am. It's who inspires me. And, but I'm thankful for this opportunity. <coughs> and um, the body of work here today encompasses my experiences. I love art. I love dance. I love all of it. And it's in there. But I've also had to struggle through you know, the everyday life, living what we live. Each of us go through it. 
and there's a section of the show that deals with some of those issues that I had to encounter. And they weren't easy issues for me to deal with. And I've been this person that's been, you know, I put myself in this bit of a box somewhat because I don't like making people uncomfortable. That's not my personality. It's, it's not who I am. And I'm happy that that's not who I am. So <coughs> but there are certain things sometimes we have to speak truth to power. And so this show deals with some issues that are kind of uncomfortable to a lot of us. But it needs to be said. And it's not to make anybody wrong. It's just my feelings. And so I'm unapologetic for that. But once we know what, solu what problems are, we also have to figure out what the solutions are. And the solutions are what I'd like to focus on right now. So even though the show deals with some of the issues that, that I felt uncomfortable with and, and I had to talk about in a certain way, the, the body of the show comes back to the piece that I think is signature for who I am as a person, which is the circle of friends. And you know that was the first Matisse painting that I saw that inspired me to be an artist. And I'm a self-taught artist. I started painting. For some reason, when I saw this paint, the, the Matisse dance, even though it was all Caucasian dances, I had this idea in my head of people of different ethnicities in that circle. And so that was one of the first paintings that I did. And I'm so proud and happy that I did that piece. And so once again, this show is for us to question ourselves and to be empathetic to our neighbors and our friends. As I love to say, be kind to each other. And so regardless of what you see in the show, the ending and the continuation is the circle of friends. So again, I thank you for being here. Um, I feel the love with this weather that so many people are here. My agents from IMG are here. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting. Um, and I have a special treat for you. There was this friend of mine that's uh, an actor name is Gary Edison. And Gary does the works of Langston Hughes in his poetry and really encompasses everything. And yesterday was Langston Hughes's birthday. I just found that out. So Gary is going to perform a piece by Langston Hughes. But again, thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the show. And thank you, Kiki and the Rye Art Center and Morgan Stanley. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, good evening. The poem I'm about to present to you is entitled Daybreak in Alabama. And just a brief overview, sometimes when I do the poem, I imagine that Langston and his cohort, I should say, Zora Neale Hurston, traveled together throughout the Deep South looking for the primitive and the Negro uh, as it was said during the Harlem Renaissance, when the Negro was in vogue. And so I imagine that they were traveling down south and they entered the state of Alabama. And when they entered that state, the sun was rising. So basically, he had to have seen the many people that were working in the fields so early in the morning. But I think what he also saw were the many colors of those people. And the connection and choice for this poem was through what I saw of Alvin's work, the use of color of people in color. So please pay attention when you hear that color and what I think Langston is trying to say. I give you Daybreak in Alabama. <clears throat> when I gets to be a composer, I'm going to write me some music about Daybreak in Alabama. And I'm going to put the prettiest songs in it, rising out of the ground like a swamp mist, and falling out of heaven like soft dew. And I'm going to put some tall, tall trees in it, and the scent of pine needles, and the smell of red clay after rain and long rednecks and poppy colored faces and big brown arms 
and the few daisy eyes of black, white, black, white, black people. And I'm going to put some brown hands and yellow hands and the red clay earth hands in it, touching each other with kind fingers and touching each other as natural as do. And that dawn of music, when I get to be a composer and write about daybreak, in Alabama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So please enjoy a glass of wine and some delicious hors d'oeuvres from Alvin and Friends. Um, Alvin will join you in the gallery. Um, in the meantime, we're going to invite, we're also streaming this virtually, <laughs> we're going to invite our virtual audience and whoever wants to join me in person to begin a tour of the um, additional works throughout the exhibit. We'll do the, and I, I ask all of you to take a circle tour of the Rye Art Center this, so that you can soak up all of the beautiful colors and all the challenging ideas and enjoy the show. Um, I just wanted to say that I, the art expresses the life and the experience of the artist. Their work reflects their America. Art is about inspiring us. Enjoy the show. Thank you. <laughs> Have a drink. Have a snack. Have some rum meatballs from Alvin and Friends and make the rounds. I'm going to continue on the virtual tour. Thank you. And I'm going to get a glass of wine. Oh my gosh. OK, this is perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to start with Barry Mason's work. Do we have Barry here? Barry? I'm looking for Barry. Can you see Barry's work on the board? Hi, how are you? Stan Hall. Oh, hey. Oh, fantastic I'm going to make my way around. Eyes are a mess. Oh, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm making my round. I'm doing a virtual streaming tour yeah, right now as we speak. I'm going to catch you. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm going to do a virtual tour. We've got the cameraman and Barry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we 
are going to pass through the industry. We make our way through the hallway. I am thrilled to have all these tremendous artists. And we have another piece by Cho out here. And then we have our lovely, our first female artist here in my tour. This is Courtney Minor. And I'm saying lovely also because she's lovely, but she has a lovely piece, mixed media, and it's actually titled Love. Isn't that lovely? Again, I hope people can join us in person at some point. This is really working And then we're moving along here down the hallway. We've got actually Don Marie Blackwell's son. Thanks for being here. And here's Don Marie. There's Don Marie. Here, Don Marie. Say hello. This is her beach on fire. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. We really appreciate it. Beautiful blue Caribbean sea. Yes, absolutely. In the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican Republic. And then next to Don Marie, we have Brian Kennedy. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Say hi. I love it. How are you doing, everybody? And so Brian's piece is really interesting. You can tell he's influenced by mythical figures and superheroes, right? Absolutely. Because, I mean, wow, this is really interesting. And you have to take some time to sort of understand the story of what's going on here. There's a lot to take in. There's <laughs> a lot to take in. And after Brian, we have another piece by Toa, which is, um, you start to recognize his style, called Gorgel. And next to that, we have Dennis Shelton's piece. It's a collage, and you can see a juxtaposition of Michelle Obama and the Queen. Yes, we can too. A lot of these poem pieces reflect the thoughts of the artist and the experiences of the artist and the times that we're in. And another piece by Dennis Shelton right down here below is called The Two Americas. It's the black flag and the American flag and the 50 um, not noted luminaries represent, black luminaries, represent 50 states in the U.S. So they're the stars of the flag. It's a really cool piece. I don't know where Dennis is. She's supposed to be here. Above that is Danielle Spot. She's not here, but this piece um, is a really tremendous piece. It has bullet casings around the photograph of the student. Um, and this piece, the sister piece, or maybe I should say the brother piece, is just acquired by the Newark Art Museum. So congratulations, Danielle. Um, above, to the right of that, we have Explore Freedom. What a cool name. Sarah on Green. This is mixed media collage and repurposed street posters. Really cool and interesting. And to the right of that, we have Kevin Beal. And we have Kevin here yes. in the reception with us. This is a beautiful drawing, graphite drawing of Aaliyah. Kevin's a graphic designer and he also volunteers his time to teach art to underprivileged children. Thank you for being here, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. So, so wonderful to have you. And then this is Kiara Elliott. And again, you know, this one is titled Breathe. And it's, you know, obviously reflecting time, the time and what's happening today and also her, her feelings about what's happening in the world, but also hopeful. Thank you for that. And then to the left here we have Katori Bishop. Katori is a children's illustrator. You can see by the beautiful pop of color that I'm sure the kids would love to read anything that she would illustrate. And mixed media here. And next to Katori we have Evan Bishop, who is actually Katori's husband. Another beautiful, hopeful piece in spray paint and acrylic. And I would say this is hopeful because it's a butterfly, and butterfly represents freedom. And then, while you're here, and if you make it back, we've got some work. We've got prints for sale by MC Beal, Kevin. Um, we have, oh, I always order them online. And then we also have prints for sale by um, Rich Kissy and Toag and Raw and Sparks. Scarves by Alvin Clayton, and you'll see the painting shortly, the Blue Potter Ginsburg. It's fantastic. So now we're going to join Alvin in the main gallery at his circle of friends painting. We need to find out. Alvin's coming, but we can see a painting of Alvin that he did of himself in front of his first inspired painting, Matisse with the dancers. And then the Circle of Friends painting, the original painting that he was just talking about at the front reception. So you have the original inspiration of all the white dancers and the teeth, and then you have the different backgrounds and ethnic races. 
and all these sort of salad and start in the front. Now we're just going to do a little pan of some of the artwork until Alvin joins us, which should be momentarily, so we can also, if we want him to join us, we can talk about some of the artwork. So I'll let you take the camera around, Alvin, and have a look around. stuff that was going on in this world, I'm like, you know what? It's about time that we give women the, the hands up. So this is called conceding the world to women. And you know, I you know we, we men have run stuff for a, a long time and we need to let some other somebody else take the reign. So forgive me guys for saying that but it is. And so this piece was done I did it during the time when during the pandemic when all of the places that had the best results on on the COVID response were, they had women as leaders. And you know, we have our mothers and our grandmothers and everything else, and they always seem to take care of everything in the home and make things right when everything goes wrong. So I conceded the world's women. And now Kiki, take it away. And then I'm gonna take it away from there because I'm gonna say that brings us to March, which is right around the corner, where I'll be curating a show called Censored and Poetic in honor of National Women's History Month. So join us for that, but also thank you so much for joining us virtually. Thank you to our sponsors again, Morgan Stanley and our supporting sponsor, The Maggards. And thank you for being here. And come and see the show. 
and enjoy it. And cheers. Have a great thank evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.